campaign that has been underway. And so um, our, our uh, uh, communications department in the city of Englewood, which is Chris Hargreth and Lucia Magnuson are here tonight to present the efforts of that campaign and where we're headed into the future and, and provide you the uh, ability to provide some comments or thoughts or some guidance. Uh, they'll have a few videos uh, as well. And oh, I'm gonna turn it over to them to do their presentation. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, thanks for inviting us this evening. We really appreciate it. Um, I'm communications director, Chris Targeth. Uh, with me tonight is digital content and marketing specialist, Lucia Magnuson. And we're pleased to give you an update on the ongoing Flow It, Flow it Forward campaign. Um, before we jump in, I want to say that creating this campaign has definitely been a team effort um, between Public Works, Utilities, South Platte Renew, of course, the Communications Department, Finance Department, and the City Manager's Office. So a lot of, a lot of people involved with this one. You want to go ahead and advance that, Lucia? So Flow It Forward is, pardon me while I get rid of a window here. So Flow It Forward may, focuses on updating and maintaining our strong water systems. The name Flow It Forward is the city's commitment to recognize um, its forward thinking residents to use their taxpayers dollars wisely. And you probably you know, can tell with the, the pay it forward well-known phrase, we're kind of paying homage to that phrase as we flow it forward to Inglewood and uh, future generations. Uh, the Flow It Forward campaign has three goals. We wanna celebrate our forward thinking residents to create a positive and powerful message, help citizens understand the importance of this initiative and build trust at the same time uh, with our city government. Go ahead and advance that please. So I'm sure you saw this in uh, the summer citizen, uh, Inglewood Citizen Magazine. And really what we wanted to do was launch this campaign with something that was easily digestible for everybody. And one of the primary goals was we wanted, we wanted a grade schooler to be able to understand what is actually you know, some pretty complicated messaging. So this is what we started with to launch this campaign Hopefully you saw it. There's a companion video that goes with this. Um, Lucia is gonna share that with you here in just a few minutes. But um, if you hadn't, haven't had a chance to see this infographic, this was in, again, the summer uh, 2020 Citizen Magazine. So please take a look. All and right. And I'm gonna go ahead and pass this off to Lucia. Thank you, Chris, and thank you guys for having me tonight. So I wanted to start with um, the first postcard that went out. This was a targeted postcard and it targeted neighborhoods that were hit by the flood in 2018. Um, the drop date on that was July 1st and it was sent to 14, over 1400 residents. And it really focused on the before and after of our stormwater system. So clearing out all the de de debris and what resulted from it. The next postcard that we sent out um, was basically a launch of the Poet Forward campaign, um, giving a general overview of it, what our goals were, and gives that rate chart at the bottom of that postcard. Um, the drop date on that was August 17th, and it went out to over 17,000 residents. And then the third postcard that went out most recently, um, this is mainly a race breakdown. And we wanted to make sure that everyone saw the comparison between other cities for water, sewer, and stormwater and what their exact month, well, not exact, their average monthly bill increase would be. Um, that drop date September 22nd, and that went out to over 17,000 residents as well. The next is the Inglewood Citizen. So we started putting the groundwork in for this starting summer 2018. We have a variety of articles. The most recent one was in the fall 2020 Citizen Magazine that just went out. Um, we have the lovely front cover over on the right here. And it mainly talked about water, sewer, stormwater, and how it was gonna basically advance um, with the Flow It Forward program. 
Next is videos. So with videos, we have five videos that have gone out relating to the Flow It Forward campaign. Um, this, at the time when I put this presentation together, we were at 13,763 views. Um, but right now we're at 17,818 views on all of these videos. And this is across every social media platform and across YouTube. Um, and I wanna share those videos with you now and hopefully it works. Please let me know if the sound isn't working. Hello, Anglewood. We're only getting the picture, no sound. Yeah, I think the sound stopped working. Yeah, we're getting pretty choppy. I think we have a bandwidth issue, maybe, Lucia. We might not be able to share all the videos, but I'm hoping you guys can go back and um, look through them and watch them. But I'll give you a little bit of statistics around them. So this video basically went through the infographic that you saw in the previous slide. Um, and it got 3,808 views over across all of our platforms. And this was really the overview of the Flow It Forward campaign. The next video is okay. an Inglewood moment in history about water independence. Um, and that one got a total of 5,354 views um, across all of our platforms. And it basically went into um, how Inglewood Water came to be, how we're independent. And Chris, you can probably speak better to this. I'm so bad. <laughs> yeah, so the, you, you might be familiar with the Inglewood Moments in History ser series that we do. Um, and this one focused on Inglewood's water rights, which as you know, our rival Denver's water rights. So, that, and just the importance of those water rights in the everyday lives of the of the residents. So, do you want to try to play this one, Lucia, and see if we have any better luck with it? Yeah, I can yeah. try. Yeah, it looks like our videos are not going to play nice. Um, yeah, here in a few minutes, Lucia, is, she's going to talk about our landing page that has all of the information for Flow It Forward. Um, literally everything is linked there, including all of these videos. So if you haven't seen them, just go to that, that, that landing page and you'll see them all listed. All right, I'll, the next video is Allen Water Treatment Plant. Um, and that got 2,289 views. And it just went through and walked through the Allen Water Treatment Plant and everything they have going on down there. Next is the stormwater pipe cleaning, which showed us bringing debris out of all the stormwater pipes and what we're doing to repair those. And that got 3,114 views. And I would say that, and unfortunately, we can't, looks like we're not going to be able to see these, but that was a really fascinating video because it showed from within the pipe them clearing the debris. And it, I think it, it, that should have a real powerful effect on the residents. And, you know, they can really see their tax dollars or their fees at work as all of that. I was myself, I was dumbfounded at how much debris was in those pipes. And I can't imagine as a citizen that you, that wouldn't make you instantly feel better. Um, about the situation um, within those pipes. Yeah, and the next one what is about South Platte Renew's vision, and that one just recently went out last week. Um, so we had this basic um, introduction video, and then we linked a further module um, that Peter provided to us that just explains South Platte Renew's um, process and how everything behind the wastewater system. And that one got 3,253 views across all of our platforms. And that, that one's actually doing really well because we just now, we just launched that not less than a week ago. So that's performing quite well. Yeah, that one's, that one's the newest post. 
in the Flow It Forward campaign. Um, next on social media steps, so we, the most um, engagement that we get is through Facebook, and right now we're at 40,992 reach, um, and that and basically means with all of our posts, they're hitting people's feeds and timelines, and people are able to see them, um, but they haven't interacted with them yet. So the engagement part, that's if they click, like, share, do anything on the post, um, that's what the engagement part is. And we have 3,492 engagement on all of our posts. And over all of our videos on Facebook, 12,836 total views on all of our videos. I think um, the what, next that, what, closest, it, go ahead, Lucia, sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say the next closest is next door and that has roughly 5,000 impressions and 26 engagements from there. Yeah, I just thought I'd add that whenever we see a number like that, a reach of uh, almost 41,000 on Facebook, you know, anytime we see a reach that's higher than the population of Inglewood, I, I feel like it's performing very well. So we're, we're very pleased with that. Yeah, and things are changing all the time. Things might, I, I have ads ongoing for um, the Flow It Forward campaign. So that number just keeps increasing. Um, with how many people we reach. But right now, the most um, liked, best performed post is the before and after of the stormwater pipe over here on the right. That reached roughly 10,000 people. We got 255 likes, comments, and shares, and almost 1,500 post clicks on that. So people clicking into the post. So that one was very successful. Next is social media comments and this is purely to illustrate that we do need a change so i took a selection of comments from all of our posts basically people just saying the water is terrible and they want a change um and you're welcome to look back on all the posts i have them all linked i should have them all linked um if you want to look more into these comments So lastly, the website landing. So we do have a Flow Up Forward landing page, and that includes all of our videos. Um, it also includes all the postcards that went out, and it has all the information about Flow Up Forward on that page. And we also included Flow Up Forward on our main landing page as a button, one of those four buttons, um, right there, right in your face. So that was included. And do you guys have any questions? Anybody wish to say something? If not, we'll uh, move on. Um, who exactly received the postcards? Because I'm wondering, I don't recall getting any postcards from you guys. Um, and I'm pretty much at the city limits. So I'm just wondering where, where did it end? or like what area of residence you sent it to? It should encompass the entire city limits. I mean, those are the lists that we pay for. Um, you know, every now and again, you know, you know how that is with bulk mail. Sometimes, you know, things don't arrive. We get those comments with, with the Inglewood Citizen Magazine. It's unfortunate, um, you know, there are no guarantees when those postcards go out, they, you know, hopefully are reaching as many people as possible. But yeah, those, the, the, the second two postcards were sent to a list that included every address in the city. But that's good feedback because I, you know, when I get that feedback, I take it back to the postal service and kind of ask those questions. One thing that would be helpful um, if you could ask any of your neighbors, if they recall seeing those, because then we can identify areas you know, with a, uh, with a postal route in general and try to identify what's happening. Okay. Makes sense. Anything further, Caitlin? No, that's it. Anybody Chairman, else? Chairman, may I uh, chime in just a little bit? Go ahead, Pete. Um, so I'm just, so I know that there has been feedback from the board over the last several months in terms of making sure that we're getting uh, communication out to the residents. And so as you're able to go back and review the videos, and, and unfortunately they didn't play tonight, um, uh, which is too bad. 
is there something that you think we're that we should be focusing on a, in addition to this? Uh, our plan is to carry this through uh, next year, and we're going to spend time focused specifically on the customer assistance program and how that's going to roll out. But allow allow this to um, not just end at the time that the budget and the rates and fees are passed, but move beyond and, and be a, an ongoing campaign. Um, are, there, are there things that you'd like us to focus on differently than what you've seen so far or, or any things that we're missing, things you like? Obviously we need to get postcards more uh, broadly to everyone. And so we, we can actually get you copies of those postcards so that you have your own copy as well. But anything else we should be focused on? Well, it looks like nobody's got anything. I think you're doing, you're on the track there, Peter. Okay. Well, then we can uh, we can definitely continue with our plan as forward. We've got uh, more communications coming down the road, and um, uh, I want to thank Chris and Lucia for uh, helping us out with this and and. And uh, thanks for coming tonight. Very good. Thank you. You bet. Thank, Thank you, everybody, you. for having us. Okay. Second item on the new business is ordinances, sewer fund rate increase ordinance. Okay. So this is an informational for the board. Uh, we are uh, in the process of right now working with legal, the legal department in Englewood to draft the ordinances. Uh, well, the ordinance. So the, the only ordinance that is required is for the the sewer rate increase, and that will be presented to council on the um, next Monday. And so um, that that ordinance will propose the rate increase that has been presented to the board and was ultimately um, uh, approved to move forward uh, via the budget of four and a half percent for sewer rates. And so that was the Last year it was seven percent, so we've able we've been able to actually bring that one down to four percent. And if you recall, over the next several years, we anticipate that being in the four and a half all the way down to the three and a half uh, range. So it's I just wanted to provide an update that that ordinance will be going to council for first reading next Monday, and um, uh, see if there's any feedback from the the board relative to that ordinance. Has anybody in the board uh, been contacted or got a problem with uh, the rate increase? I think everybody's pretty up to date on it, Peter. Okay, perfect. Okay. Next item is the Inglewood Citizen Magazine recognition. And so what I wanted to do on that is, and I, um, it was part of the presentation you just saw. And so if you all just received your Englewood Magazine, I wanted to highlight that the cover is actually a picture of a longtime employee uh, at the city of Englewood Allen water treatment plant. Uh, his name is Dave Chapman. He's worked for the city and he's worked at the plant for 37 years. And so he made the cover photo. And then if you, if you turn to the inset photo, uh, there was a picture of, of the operation staff that operates the Allen treatment plant. So I just wanted to highlight uh, as you look at your Englewood city uh, Citizen Magazine that uh, you take a look there and um, and just uh, uh, say thank you to the staff that's helping keep that uh, water plant operating and and they got a little bit of recognition. They did. That was good. I enjoyed it myself. 37 years. That's pretty good. Is he going to hang around much longer? He's got a few more years from what he yeah. said. So we, uh, we're we we're trying to extract all the information out of his head as we can right now for the next several years so that we can we can train our, our younger and emerging staff that are newer staff so that uh, we can uh, uh, have other people uh, take that knowledge for the next 37 years. On behalf of the board, I think I speak for the rest of us. We thought it, it, I enjoyed the magazine and you're doing a good job on it and uh, give our uh, kudos to the uh, water uh, staff down there at the filter plant. Great. We will definitely pass that on. Thank you. Is Chapman, um, did he used to coach softball at Englewood High School? He did. He has been okay. a long time coach in the city of Englewood. So he is, he is Mr. Englewood. He has been yeah. here his entire life. Uh, he lives over by um, Sherilyn Elementary School and um, he 
he, he is as dedicated of a, of a man to the city of Englewood. And it's, it's just, it's great that he made the cover. I think it's a nice, um, nice appreciation for his years of service. Very Definitely. good. Thank you, Caitlin. Mm -hmm. Next item is uh, new utility staff welcome. Okay, so we just wanted to provide, a, we, we're in the process of, of staffing up a number of, of vacant positions that have been uh, vacant, uh, that are existing positions that we uh, are filling to staff up um, utilities to be able to execute the findings of the master plan. And uh, we have three tonight. And so I'm gonna start with uh, Deputy Director Goodman to introduce her new staff member, or uh, introduce who he is. We don't have him on the, on the uh, call, but comment on who we've hired. Okay. Thank you. So, um, so we recently hired Brian Balladet uh, for our operations supervisor position, which is definitely um, a much needed position. So he's going to help us out with, with treatment. And as you can see from some of the comments that were made, uh, we have a little bit of work to do uh, with that, with that taste and odor. Um, he comes to us from uh, the city of Aurora, where he actually worked his way through um, all three of the water treatment plants at Aurora and um, it just comes to us with a positive attitude, a, um, a great work ethic and a willingness to listen to the guys who have been working really hard for many years here at the plant. So we're excited to have him on board. How do you spell his last name? B-A-L-A-D-A-D. -A -A -D. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Our second introduction, uh, Steve Simon will introduce a, a new engineer we fired. All right, thanks, Peter. So our newest member of the engineering team is Mike Asani. Uh, he's actually kicking off his third week here. Mike comes to us with about nine years of experience in the water sector. Um, the first part of that, about the first five years, was in the private sector, um, where he was performing water facilities design, uh, hydraulic modeling. Uh, he spent the last four years with Suez Water out in New Jersey. He actually just moved out here with his um, with his partner. So we're excited to have him uh, here in the state and at Englewood. Uh, at Suez, he was also leading capital improvement projects. He was uh, performing modeling efforts, leading SCADA teams, and working a business intelligence solution. solution. So really good fit for the for the needs of our um, utility in our in our division. Uh, I'm really excited to have him on board. He's he's done a great job hitting the ground running. I. I told him when we were interviewing, he's going to have a lot of things on his desk the first day he starts, and and he he certainly did, and he, he's been doing a great job of of of, of uh, picking it all up. Okay, Mike, could you spell? I mean, uh, Steve, could you spell Mike's last name? I sure can. It's A S S A N T E. Thank you, sir. You bet. And uh, I was actually just talking to Mike today, and he does have a a, a pretty good background in modeling of water systems. And he's already starting to identify some um, opportunities within the way we pump water through our system, as well as the way we, uh, way we work with our tanks uh, that I think uh, we're hopeful could actually have more of an immediate effect on, on how the system operates and, and that water uh, aesthetic that we've been talking about. We think there might be some just more immediate uh, opportunities by changing somewhat the ways we operate the system. So we're really excited to have someone who can really dig in and start to optimize the, the performance of the system. When you talk about tanks, are you talking about the water tank there behind uh, Groove uh, dealership there? Yeah, yeah, our two elevated tanks and right then elevated um, tank. the other tanks we have in the system. Gotcha. Um, and so just, just quickly, so sometimes what happens with tanks is we put water into them and then we take water out, but the way it happens, it'll sometimes short circuit and so the water that stays in the tank doesn't actually go in and then come back out and then go in and then come back out. It just short circuits. And so we're looking at uh, potentially optimizing that so that that water that's in the tank uh, doesn't age. Good, good. And that can help, that can help with those, uh, ex exactly those hey. kinds of things. Right, okay. And then the, the last person uh, that I wanna introduce is actually on the call. It's uh, Brenda Varner. And uh, Brenda uh, has recently accepted the position as business support specialist for the city of Englewood Utilities. So Brenda comes to us from South Platte Renew, where she is the government communication, uh, a government communication specialist. And uh, uh, she's worked at South Platte for the past six years. 
Um, and we are extremely excited to have her on board. This was something that uh, Brenda uh, showed, expressed an interest in over the last uh, a, a few weeks ago. And uh, it really just made a lot of sense in terms of really helping utilities um, uh, from a business process perspective. So um, Brenda will start in a couple weeks. The next water and sewer board meeting will actually be run by Brenda. And so I know she's on the call. Brenda, do you wanna say a, um, one or two words of, about, uh, about coming over to utilities? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't think my camera is working, but uh, hopefully to get that up and running for next meeting. I'm definitely looking forward to uh, meeting all of you and working with all of you. And um, I, I know the council members on the call. So we, we met over our joint council meeting over at South Platte Renew. So I'm looking forward to continuing working with you guys. And I'm really excited to be a part of this uh, a new or process with utilities, and I hope I can help with the, the growth with the organization. Very good. Thank you. Okay, right. that's, uh, that's just an update of who we've got from a new staffing perspective. Thank you. Next item is engineering update projects, the big dry creek easement acquisition. And so this will be Steve Simon who will hand, will handle these uh, engineering updates. All so right. Steve, it's all yours. If I could jump in here real quick, I got I have to go to the Keeping with Beautiful meeting, but I wanted to, to just let you guys know that I, that's the reason I'm uh, I'm leaving. I'm sorry to miss the rest of the meeting, but that's an important one this time, and I'll try to get the time moved to that meeting so I don't have this regular conflict. So um, hopefully this will be solved for the future. But I just wanted to say goodbye before I bounced off the call. Thank you, Joe. Thanks yeah. for seeing you. Thank you, Quickie Steve. It's yours. All righty. Well, thank you, Chair Wiggins. Thank you, Peter. Um, so our first update is regarding the Meadow Creek pipeline repair. Um, this is the first of the two figures that are in your packet. Um, I'm actually having trouble sharing my screen at the moment. I'm not sure if it's it's in your packet. If someone else, um, Peter, Angela, if you have the opportunity to, to share that. Um, otherwise, um, you can follow along with the, the link that was in the packet. Um, well, we've, we've got the packet here, I think. It shows okay. It here oh, there you go. Here. There. Angela, All right. well, thank Angela you. brought it up. Angela to rescue. Thank you very much. Um, so this update is on the, the Meadow Creek Pipeline Repair Project. Before I dive into the actually findings of that project, I wanted to, to provide the board um, a brief background on what the Meadow Creek um, system is. So Anglewood actually owns assets that are up in the, uh, up in the mountains near Winter Park and Fraser. Those are shown in green on the figure. That's the Meadow Creek Reservoir uh, gotcha. and the Meadow Creek Pipeline. Um, while we own them, we actually don't physically take any water through them. Those are um, executed through an exchange that we have uh, with Denver Water. So Denver Water actually uses the water um, and then exchanges that um, for Englewood use uh, down in Chatfield. So Englewood's usage of the water, um, if we're to, to follow the flow of the water um, from Meadow Creek Reservoir, it flows into uh, Meadow Creek. Um, there's a diversion off Meadow Creek that um, diverts the flow into the Meadow Creek pipeline, which again is an Englewood owned asset. That then flows into Denver Waters Ranch Creek collection system, which then flows through the Moffat Tunnel, which flows into Boulder Creek and ultimately um, lands in Gross Reservoir. Uh, again, we receive our water in the system through exchange. That was um, all the terms of which were covered in the 1995 settlement, settlement agreement uh, with Denver Water. Uh, a few of the the important terms of that were, were outlining Denver Water's obligation to uh, own and operate that, and then outline the amount of water um, that we are gonna receive annually from that, um, uh, from that system. And historically that annual delivery has been about 2,700 uh, acre feet per year of water. So it's a significant amount of water that we are, um, we are acquiring through this, um, uh, through this system. And, and one of the important terms of that agreement and why it's so important that that infrastructure remains operable is if it's not, we're subject to a reduction um, in our water uses. So again, it's really important that that, that pipeline stays in service and remains um, operable. Uh, over the last couple uh, few years, there have been some observed um, leaks that were surfacing. Denver Water led an assessment uh, back in 2017 that, that outlined those. It was, it was basically a, a topside visual inspection um, 
that identified uh, any risk associated with the with the pipeline and identified where these uh, leak repairs were. So those those leak repairs were executed this summer. Um, those repairs required the pipeline to be um, to be shut down and dewatered, and so completely drained. So for critical infrastructure, when we have pipes shut down, that's that's a really opportunistic time to to do some more inspection. So that's what we did. We were able to. Um, we were able to inspect about 30% of that pipeline. So that green pipeline there is about 10 miles. We were able to um, take an interior inspection of, of three miles of that. And two miles of that did of uh, personnel entering the pipeline. We contracted with Dewberry engineers. Uh, two individuals went in and were able to um, visually observe uh, two miles of that pipeline. Uh, and then just yesterday, we completed um, uh, one mile of CCTV inspection where we actually um, took a truck into the pipe with a camera on it and were able to, to drive through it and, and observe. And, and we did that in areas where the pipe was either too small um, to get a, a person safely in there. The, the, the slopes were too steep um, for a person to safely um, take a look at that. So the findings were, were actually great. And so um, again, we were able to take a look at about 30% of the pipeline and nothing, um, nothing came up actually that required any immediate or urgent repair. The individuals that were working on our behalf with Dewberry do this kind of inspections all the time and mentioned that they, uh, they were actually surprised at, at how well the pipeline looked um, given its age and operating condition up in the mountains. Would you say um, so that, that might be because of the quality of water that comes out of the Meadow Creek Reservoir versus what comes out of the Platte River? <laughs> that could definitely be a part of it. Um, that is an important part of it. We can tend to see uh, interior corrosion or, or degradation if um, uh, depending on water quality. And another part of it is just good construction methods when the pipe was installed. Sometimes with these older pipes, and particularly in the mountains where there's a lot of rock, yeah. um, the, the pipes aren't, are, aren't always uh, installed or bedded as well as we would like. Um, so that can, that, can, that can tend to cause um, joint separation. But, but, but we didn't see that here. So, so definitely a, a positive outcome for us. Very good. Um, any questions on that part before I jump over to the, the second project, the Big Dry Creek Diversion Update? Hey, Steve. Yeah. What was the size pipe that they did the manned inspection in? They did, they would go down to um, 30 inch. And so there was uh, 27 inch and below. There was a, um, a truck that went in and 30 inches and above the, they would actually get in, which is Something I would I would never ever do, um, but I'm glad there's individuals that are comfortable doing that. And and we made sure that safety protocol was done at all times. There's there's always an egress on either side. We have top side of attendance. Um, we have communication protocol where top side attendants can make sure that that individuals in the pipe are are safe. So so these guys were going two miles um, yep. into thirty and thirty six inch pipe. That is correct. I don't know how they I, I am way too claustrophobic for something. You, like I'm with you, Peter. <laughs> As am I. Mariners. As am I. They love it though. They love doing this stuff and, and good All for right. them that they do. <laughs> okay, Steve. All righty. Well, I will um, jump on over to the Big Dry Creek diversion. Angela, if you wouldn't mind scrolling to the second figure. Um, so this, some of you may be familiar with this project. This is... Um, a project that will divert the um, discharge from Big Dry Creek from upstream of our Union Avenue raw water intake um, to downstream of the, the intake. Union Avenue is actually our primary um, intake system that delivers water to the Allen treatment plant for, for treatment. And so during, um, during certain flow periods, a, a, a large concentration of our, our water that we're taking into the plant can be from Big Dry Creek. And that's problematic because Big Dry Creek is um, is very hard water. Um, and so what this project will do then is construct a diversion within the creek itself and then um, discharge that water downstream of where we're pulling in water for, um, um, for treatment. Another benefit of this project is that it's also going to uh, include a, um, a low head um, hydropower unit. And so it's, a, it's an in-pipe system that when the flows um, are, are flowing through the pipe, they can turn the turbine in and provide um, um, some renewal power, power generation. A portion of this project has already been constructed and that was to fast track it uh, basically ahead of the pedestrian trail. If you're familiar with that area, the new pedestrian trail that went in, um, there's about a thousand feet of pipeline um, that is required as part of the project, about 800 feet 
uh, went in the vaults um, on the pipe where the metering um, and the hydro units are going to be installed. Those have already been installed. Um, what this project is going to involve is placement of the equipment within those vaults and then the construction of, of the, um, the, the diversion with the Big Dry Creek and about 204 meter, 200 feet more of pipeline. And so the, the areas outlined in red dashed are um, where we need to acquire additional easement, either for existing facilities that were already installed as, as part of that um, uh, as part of that fast tracking that was done or as part of the facilities that will be constructed as part of this um, next phase of work. So uh, in order to complete the work, so we're moving forward with um, um, the easement acquisition for that. Um, the easement will be acquired from the Colorado Water Conservation Board. Um, we've, we've reviewed our legal from, from both organizations have reviewed the easement agreement and um, have made that final. So the Colorado Water Conservation Board is going to be taking that forward in mid-November, and then we'll be bringing the, uh, an ordinance to, to, uh, to authorize execution into the agreement um, for Anglewood Council approval in, uh, in December. Very good. So Anybody happy to have questions. Okay, I think that's very good, Steve. Thank you. How about All right, the, thank you, Chair Riggins. How about the October uh, Water Sewer Board figure you had on here, Steve uh, Peter? Uh, th those are the two figures that we just had, Angela just had pulled up. I got you. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about the engineering projects updates? All righty. Any old business? We got old business here. The Denver fire valve turning issue follow up. Is that Angela? Mm -hmm. Yes, I will turn that one over to Angela and she can provide us an update on that. All right. So, um, not to uh, spoil the ending, but we did get a lunch offer out of it. So it was a it was a good resolution. But I'll I'll back it up to to when we had the uh, the meeting. So we met with um with our fire marshal and um with the Denver fire chief. And it was a great meeting. The, um, the Denver Fire Chief apologized. Um, he recognized the seriousness of the situation and the fact that you know they, they don't want it to happen again. We said, we don't want it to happen again. So we, we talked through a couple of different um, ideas that we had. Uh, one of the things that actually came out of this meeting was that we, we thought we could partner with them when we had open excavations for them to do some training. So, um, so it ended up being kind of a positive thing for, for both parties. And then we also came up with some better means of communication for um, how we can prevent this from happening again. And then also kind of just fundamentally discuss that they're, they're not going to be operating uh, any valves um, that, that don't really just, you know, involve immediate street collapse or immediate danger to um, to people. So it was it was a very good meeting. Um, at the conclusion of the meeting, the uh, the Denver Fire Chief offered to buy the members of the crew lunch and do kind of a joint lunch with uh, the the members of the of that crew, both for our our group and for his, so that they could you know kind of get together, break bread. Um, and whatnot. So um, they, they haven't done that yet. When they do, I'll, I'll try to get them to snap some pictures and, uh, and do a little a little uh, follow up follow up presentation on that. So it was it was great. Very good. I just want to ask you one question, Angela. Did anybody uh, take up the offer on a tour of the water plant? You know, not yet. Uh, I did. I did warn some of the uh, the folks around here that we might be doing some tours, and we've been we've been kind of pritting up the place and. Uh, in, in case anyone wants to stop by and just in general. So um, I may try to do something a little bit more organized um, in the fall um, or in the winter when we actually have um, some, uh, some construction work going on so people can see some things happening. Okay, very good, thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, Peter, you got any more staff choices you wanna bring up? No, I think we've uh, covered all the updates that we wanted to cover today and uh, I, think we're, I think we're good. Okay, any of the board members? Uh, Chuck, did you have anything you want? How about you, Drivis? Do you have anything? No, I'm good, thank you. Caitlin, how about yourself? I'm good, thank you. Mr. Martinez? Uh, no, but I will be hopefully taking up on that offer for a tour of the treatment plants. How about the free lunch? Yeah, free lunch. <laughs> Good. Uh, Mayor, do you have anything? Uh, they'll let you drink the water at the end of the tour, just straight out of the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> at the, at no. the water plant, we do that. Not oh, at the yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. What am I thinking of? <laughs> okay. 
All right. Mr. Ross, did you have anything? I have, have nothing. Anything? Thank you. Don, did you have anything? I, I don't think so. Uh, Mrs. Wink, do you have anything? Um, thank you. I uh, No, I just um, sent a couple of emails to Mr. Simon and I believe Peter, just to um, Mr. Van Rye, just to ask for maybe a summary, if that's okay, Mayor. I was taking feverish notes so I could update council, especially on that, um, the piece with the fire, um, Marshall and Denver's fire chief, just to update council, I wanted to get it right, some of the updates um, and the piece before that that's coming to council, just so that the update I give or we give, you meet myself and Joe, um, helps prep the rest of the team properly. I'd rather do it more carefully. So I just sent a couple of emails asking yeah, I wonder if, summary, it, if you don't mind. Angela, no, I think it's, mind also. <laughs> yeah, I think a council request around the Denver fire um, reaction would be really helpful to lay that out a bit more. Oh, uh, that's good. I was trying to, okay, I'll do that as well, but just trying to get the details of this really important meeting of updates straight so that what we bring to council on Monday yeah. will be beneficial to the group. So, Any yeah, you know, maybe um, maybe as we move forward, um, and when Brenda comes on board, we can actually um, immediately upon completion of this uh, of the meeting within a day or two, maybe get more of a bullet instead of minutes for the meeting. We'll just do a bullet point uh, summary of the topics and what was discussed, and get that over to you, and and just do that as a regular practice. If it's not too much of a bother, I think it would be a really great help, especially given the nature of this particular board. So thank you yeah. very much for offering I think that. The Absolutely. first four are easy to explain. It was the fifth one of um, the yeah. project summaries that were that are harder to update yeah. on. So I was typing like madness when <laughs> I don't think I got it all. <laughs> we'll, we will get, we'll definitely get that for you this month and we'll okay. and we'll do that in subsequent months. Thank John, you very much. Or I forgot you. Did you have anything you wanted to bring up? Got your sound on, John? Uh, there we go. I'm good. Thank you very much, Chair. Yeah. Okay. Well, if nobody has anything else they wish to bring forward, I would call this meeting adjourned and thank you for your participation and don't forget to vote. Good evening. Thank you, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night.